Guys, how we doing? Welcome back to Good Works Tractors. We are back with another episode of our variety show. We're gonna title it Tractor Talk for now. What do you think about that? If you have a better name idea, we're all ears. We got a lot of good stuff for you today, some tractor news, something that's gonna blow your mind, some awesome tractor mods, so stick around. And as always, we are proud to be sponsored by Boro Wheel Spacers. If you're looking for a stability solution for your tractor, if you're feeling tippy side to side, ooh, we have some pictures you're gonna wanna see later of a tractor that really could've used a set of spacers. Anyways, Boro Wheel Spacers, made in the USA. Check the link out down below. So first thing up, we gotta check out this recent tractor pull explosion down in Shipshawana, Indiana. I'm telling you, this is one scary event that happened in the blink of an eye. So things start off pretty calm and collected for this heavily modified Ford tractor here. But as he gets near the end of his pull, things go a little haywire. Oh, there it is. And if you look closely in one of the views, it shows these guys standing all around him. It is a miracle nobody was hurt. There were guys literally feet away from all that flying shrapnel. That is insane. The engine ended up like 10, 15 feet away. It didn't hit anybody. I don't know how that even happened, but I'm glad everybody was okay. All right, now it's time for everybody's favorite time, the tractor modifications. And we have another collection we've rounded up from the internet. And we're gonna get started with Scott Starnes. He did an ingenious modification, something I've never seen anything like it before, but he ended up adding a tire <laughs> to his top link so that he could reach back and easily spin it to lengthen or shorten the top link to make an adjustment to whatever's hooked up to it, whether that's changing the angle on a land plane or box blade or maybe a snowblower or whatever he wants to do, he can just reach back and kind of spin that tire one way or another without having to get off the tractor seat to make those adjustments. Scott writes that he found the tire at Harbor Freight and once he knocked the bearings out, it fit the shaft diameter just perfectly. I don't know how much trial and error that took, but it's an ingenious idea. Thanks for sharing, Scott. Next up, we have Ed Robinson, who did a great job manufacturing his own homemade edge tamers. Edge tamers have proven to be a very popular hit for good reason. They're a great option to add onto your bucket to help it prevent digging into your ground when you're snow plowing, even maybe doing some leaf cleanup on your lawn. But if you want to protect your bucket, protect your driveway, edge tamers are a really great option to look into. However, Ed did a great job on his own welding up his own homemade edge tamers to use on his bucket. Nice work, Ed. Next up, we have John Fedenitz, and he has a couple of awesome items that he made for his tractor. Looks like a Kubota of some type. The first one is a really nice bolted on trailer mover for the front of his tractor. But the item that caught my eye is this drop in and bolted on shallow pan that he put inside of his bucket. And he did this to turn it essentially into a snow pusher. You know the challenge with snows, they're gonna wanna trap and hold that snow. And so putting this insert prevents that from occurring. It's a really ingenious way and it's a very high level of production. I would not be surprised if John could take this to market. Here's a couple beautiful grill guards that these guys made up. I don't know how you guys have the skills to do this, but the first one is from Jeff Meek. He made made this for his Kubota tractor. It looks absolutely amazing, very robust. Nice work, Jeff. The next one is from Randy Biggs, who made it for his John Deere tractor. And I love the design details on here. It looks just totally cool. I'd love to buy one for myself. I have started to see more and more of these custom grill guards out there. Of course, we work with 511 Grill Guards, who makes custom grill guards for all sorts of Kubota and John Deere tractors. They are part of the discount club as well. You can save 5% with code GWT ordering on their website. But whether you buy from us or build your own, one thing's understood, it's important to protect the front end of your tractor. Question for you, does anybody know of a six-way hydraulic plow for a compact tractor? Well, I can't find one and neither could Kyle Rubel, so he took matters into his own hands and converted his own six-way plow to fit his massy tractor. Well, I tell you, I'm a little jealous. I'm loving the look. He's not quite finished yet, but he's near the finish line. I think that is an awesome tool. We had a six-way plow on our Gator, but I don't know of any way to make that work on a subcompact tractor. But if you know of a company that makes one, we'd love to hear about it. Now it's time for your tractor of the week. We have a beautiful one from Dan Leslie Jr. who took an old rust bucket of a John Deere 420 and spent considerable time transforming it into the beautiful restored machine that you see here. I marvel all the time at you guys that have this kind of skill set, this patience, this dedication to see something through, to, to see a vision of something that's just wasting away and turn it into something beautiful. I've been fortunate enough to have a couple of those 400 series tractors of my own, but none were in nearly as nice a condition. It's really cool to see somebody taking the time to restore one. Our tractor tool for the week is pretty incredible. You know what? And I want to get one of these for myself. 
but he's just not selling them right now. We got to check out the Apex burial system. Rob sent me over some pictures and some video. I found some more video online as well of this system. It is incredible. Now I think Rob does a great job explaining what this is all about in the video, so we're going to let him talk about it right now. For many years, trenchers have scarred countless lawns across the country. There is now a new device to solve this old problem the Apex 2 system. Using the latest technology, best materials, and sound engineering, the Apex 2 system makes the business of burying cable fast, easy, and non-destructive. Compare the side-by-side -side results. The Apex 2 system leaves little to no trace of disturbance behind. A built-in catch at the top of the blade prevents tree roots from escaping and causing damage to the expensive landscaping. The Apex 2 system will dig clean trenches, as shallow as one inch or as deep as one foot, making it a very versatile tool. Special orders of the Apex 3 system can have these blades trench up to two feet. Man, you know, with the development we have going on, I can see this coming in handy over and over again throughout the entire building process. You know, you can lay things from just a couple inches underneath the surface down to two feet, I see it say. I see it say. I see it say. Whether it's for the dog fence, for some low voltage wiring, I'm sitting here thinking of all the things I can use this for, but tell me I'm not the only one. This is a product that should get to market. This clip is from a few years ago and it is too funny not to share. There were some demonstrators out on this farmer's land. They had a rally going on and let's just say this farmer had had just about enough of their cur their manure. Check it out. <laughs> it is hard not to laugh. If you can imagine the smell, if you've ever been around it, one of these spreaders, as it is laying stuff out, it stinks for miles, especially if you're in the wrong direction. But if you are being circled by it, it's hard to get away from it. Just look at the faces on some of these guys as they're trying to get out of the way. <laughs> That farmer's having too much fun. Well, I applaud that farmer for showing some restraint because that could have been a whole lot messier, that's for sure. Hey, so my business is actually selling tractor attachments. So we have a website, goodworkstractors.com. You can visit that site if you need something for your front end loader, like a set of pallet forks. Maybe for your three point hitch, maybe a rototiller or a rear blade. No matter what you need, we have it. We have an awesome selection. We have free shipping to 36 states. Only have to charge sac sacks. Only have to charge tax in a few states as well, but you can add it to your cart. You can go through the whole checkout system right on our website. We'll pack it up and ship it out to you. Now you know how serious we take safety around here. And while I love the ingenuity, the creativity that these guys went through, they were working on uh, putting up a barn or a shed of some kind or a canopy. They were standing in their bucket, had it raised all the way up on their front end loader, and it wouldn't reach quite high enough. So. The wheel started churning and they decided to modify their approach and put their tractor on a flatbed to get an extra, what is it, three feet maybe? And it turned out that that worked pretty well and I love the creativity to get it done, but that is a pretty darn dangerous situation for a variety of reasons. Now, number one, tractor hydraulics are known to fail and I don't see any kind of a mechanical stop to prevent that from happening. Should the hydraulic system give out, that loader could come crashing down. Now as well, this tractor is sitting on a flatbed on the back of the truck. I don't see where this is chained down or secured in any way. It could be and I just can't see it, but this is a bit of an unconventional way. A little bit of redneck engineering, however, I applaud the efforts. And to highlight the importance of how things can go wrong in the blink of an eye, when I was putting together all the information for this video this week, I noticed four different headlines from around the world of tractor related or tractor involved fatalities on an airport, on a road, at a farm. So no matter where you are in the world, I'd encourage you to take your time, slow down, be cautious, be aware of your surroundings. Danger is lurking, it can happen in the blink of an eye. With all that said, when it is time for your number to get called, I hope we can all go out in style the way that Bud did up in Minnesota. And I love that even in the gravest of times, you can have a sense of humor. And Bud did just that with his John Deere casket. Now this takes brand loyalty to a whole new level, and I'm sure if John Deere sees this, they're gonna see a market opportunity. Now hopefully you wanna wait a while before you find yourself in your own favorite brand of tractor's casket. I told you I had something about them bore wheel spacers that would come in handy, and this gentleman did not post a lot of context, but I think we can figure out what happened, all right? He had a rollover in his subcompact tractor, looks to be a 1025R, 1023E, and he has a cab on there, all right? Now we all know these tractors are tippy as they are, and if you add a cab onto that, you're not getting any wider 
wider, right? You're just getting taller, you're raising your center of gravity, and you're increasing the chance, the likelihood of a tip over or a rollover on uneven terrain. And if you're in the wintertime, like this gentleman was here, there's a good chance that if you're on a hill of some kind, it gets icy, it slips, it slides, you get a little bit of kitty wampus going on, and this is what could happen. So this is why we wanted to partner with a company like Bora. Wheel spacers can work for pretty much any tractor that's out there. They're gonna widen the footprint and give you that stability to help prevent situations like this from occurring. Now we don't have much information, but considering he did post the aftermath, I want to assume he walked away safely. If you have any more input, let us know. Now I found this recently on one of the Facebook forums. I think it was a 1023 and 1025 our group. And there they talked all about fuel cans and what you guys are using, what's the good solutions. A lot of these modern fuel systems are a real pain to use. Now it wasn't much of a surprise to see many folks using these sure cans, which are super easy and convenient to use. Gasoline and diesel, all right folks, they're colored for a reason, but they're very easy, convenient. You can pick them up with a grab handle. You can see where this twists and turns down below, easy to maneuver around. Around. You just simply pull back on this little handle and push it down and out you go. Very easy and convenient. You can stack them. I keep one in the back of my truck all the time. I'll tell you what though, if I could find out where to get a hundred of these nozzles, this came in with a tractor I purchased long ago and I tell you it's just about foolproof. It's super simple and easy to use. I don't know if it's legal anymore for them to sell, but man, I sure wish it was. So let's help each other out. Let's leave some comments here as well. I'm also going to post a survey on the community tab, so check that out. Give your answer on what is the best solution these days. A lot of these modern cans are a pain to deal with. I've seen some hacks and modifications made. There's gotta be an easier solution. All right, now question of the day. You know, I get a lot of emails from folks looking for advice on what to do and I give them my opinion the best I can, but it's just one person's opinion, right? So let's see if we can help out this gentleman. Give you his first name, Milo. Don't want to give you any much more information than that. But he recently retired, 72 years old, down in Texas. Has a 1,600 acre ranch, all right? And it has a lot of gnarly, nasty, thorny material. And for now, he is hiring somebody out to mow with a tractor. He says he has a big old Mahindra. 60 hours twice a year is what this guy is doing, and he charges him 35 bucks an hour. And so if I do my math correctly, that's gonna cost him about 4,200 bucks a year to have 120 hours of seat time with an operator burning his own fuel, his own labor, his own wear and tear, his blades, you name it going on out in that hot Texas heat. Now, wanting to take advantage of some tax benefits, maybe just owning a tractor because who doesn't want to own a tractor, Milo is thinking about and trying to justify getting a tractor to do this work himself. But there's one big stipulation when it comes to compact tractors, there are limitations. He wants to cut two to four inch diameter material, which is going to tax even the biggest compact tractor and put you up into a bigger utility tractor with a very heavy duty and very expensive brush hog behind it. So I gave it some thought and it got me thinking. I gave him a couple different viewpoints I guess that I had and the first was if the Mahindra man can go ahead and knock down all of that two to four inch material maybe in the first year or two or whatever it is and get it to a manageable level for smaller material you know maybe up to one inch uh, in diameter and if you can maintain it after that you can use a lot smaller tractor maybe still a pretty good sized brush hog but it wouldn't require such a large upfront investment. However, even so, these days with the market the way it is, you can still have fifty dollars to $70,000 wrapped up in that. I would imagine you want to have a cab because you don't want to be out in the heat all day and the bugs and everything else and the dust down there, so that's going to drive the cost up even more. But from purely a cost perspective, I feel like that $4,200 to manage mowing 120 hours a year is just a heck of a deal for you to have somebody else come on in using their own labor, their own tractor, their own fuel, everything else. You don't have to do anything. $4,200 a year for that kind of work to be done is a steal of a deal, in my opinion, and I would ride that train as long as I could. But I bring it up because this is the kind of stuff I'm asked all the time, right? And I want to give an educated response, a well thought out response that makes sense either way for a customer, but it's tough because it's just one opinion. It's just mine. So do you guys have a different way, a different angle that you would look at this, uh, different considerations to take into account? You know, there's just so many other criteria and I don't want to feel like I'm solely responsible for guiding somebody in a certain direction. So help me out. What do you guys think you should do? All right, now it's time for our spotlight of the week on a small tractor channel. We're going to talk about Rock Hill Farms this week and Brock over there does an amazing job. He is cranking out content on a consistent basis. I don't know how he does it. He's got almost 400 videos now of all sorts of projects being done with John Deere tractors. He uses his two series primarily and does a little bit of everything around his homestead. It's truly incredible and I don't know how he doesn't have 
thousands more subscribers. But if you like John Deere tractors or compact tractors in general and you want to see projects, you want to see attachments at work, just how things happen, the do's and the don'ts, Brock's got a lot of great content there for you to check out, so I'd encourage you hit that subscribe button over on his channel. All right, now it's time to announce the swag winner from last week's video. And again, we're giving this to the most liked comment. So if you leave a comment in the video, if you like it, if you give thumbs up, if you get a bunch of other thumbs up on yours and it ends up with the most, you're gonna win the swag. So we're gonna give away whatever we can find. We have some pens around here, we have some hats, shirts, keychains, whatever we can find. We're gonna be coming out with a whole bunch more stuff here sometime soon as well. So there's gonna be improved merch to give out to. But James Farrow is this week's winner and his comment, this is from last week's video about those two tractors that tipped over in the same video. Those two guys didn't accidentally roll over. They were simply compacting the soil with the size of the loaders. It's a pro move. I like that, James. Congratulations, James, and don't forget, if you want to win next week, leave a comment down below, get enough thumbs up, and it could be you. Alrighty, guys, that's going to wrap it up for us today. If you did enjoy this video, I'd love to get a thumbs up. Make sure you hit that subscribe button to follow along, be notified of when the next tractor video is coming out. And if you need something for your machine, make sure you give us a shot. Check out goodworkstractors.com. We sell and ship tractor attachments all over the country. Now, I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by, and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.